We've gotten a lot of questions over the last week, obviously in the wake of the loss of SpaceX 7. Uh, first one that's been on everyone's mind, how are the supply levels looking for uh, you guys on board the International Space Station? Well, they're, they're fine right now. Um, you know, of course, if we had any further uh, delays in our resupplies, you know, particularly past, uh, you know, mid-September, October, then, you know, we'd have some issues. But, uh, you know, with our current uh, transportation plan with Progress and uh, HTV in August, you know, assuming those come on time, we should be in uh, great shape. And so is there anything special you or your crewmates are doing to conserve, you know, supplies on board, or is it just business as usual? Yeah, it's an interesting question. You know, it's not like we can throw anything away here very easily. So, um, you know, certainly when progress leaves, uh, you know, the one that's currently here, you, you get rid of items and we, we throw things away on SpaceX. So, um, and H HTV and, and the other vehicles. So, you know, when we if we don't use something or use something to its full ex fullest extent it generally stays on board for a while and if you need to retrieve it you can um, but you know I'm still consciously you know because of the last two uh, you know vehicles that we we did that didn't arrive I'm still consciously thinking about um, you know maybe using all the food we have uh, rather than scatter it throughout different places and trash on the space station if there's something we don't eat just so it would prevent us from having to go and retrieve it later if we had to or maybe accidentally uh, disposing of something on a, on a vehicle uh, water um, definitely thinking about that you know you can you can throw away water if you throw away bags of uh, water or or food that might have some water in it uh, or some like water samples versus uh, trying to reclaim the water. So that's something we're thinking about. And then some of the, uh, you know, our waste hygiene compartment consumables that are sometimes a limiting factor, we're trying to use those up as uh, much as possible. Okay, well, after the SpaceX event, you tweeted out, you know, just kind of reminding people spaceflight is hard, but tomorrow is always a new day. Do you care to elaborate on that a little bit more? You know, while flying in space, uh, you know, building these uh, the space station, I think it's the hardest thing we've ever done. And it, uh, you know, continues to remind us of that. It's a very challenging environment. Uh, the vehicles operates, operate on their, you know, the extremes of their performance uh, capability. But, you know, when something like this happens, we just have to kind of, you know, lean forward, look ahead, keep, keep moving on. And uh, we need to, you know, learn from our mistakes. And I'm sure there's uh, things to be learned from from this incident, as there are in in, in any anything like this that happens. But uh, you know, we we have to keep our focus on on what our goals are and and keep pressing forward with, you know, the the resources we have. And that's what we're doing here on board the space station. I know the folks on the ground are doing the doing the same thing as well. Okay. Well, the next. Uh, cargo ship already about to head head your way. The Progress 60 launching a little bit later tonight. What's the crew's you know level of anticipation to get this next cargo vehicle on orbit? Well, uh, you know, third time's a charm. I hope, and uh, you know, we're we're hoping that that we get this one. Obviously, you know, like I said, you know, it's. You know, as as these next two, if they get delayed or even move out beyond September, October, it it will cause uh, problems. But you know, we're we're as confident as we can be in in any rocket launch. I mean, there's always risks, there's always chances of failure, but you have to look at the positive, and and we expect it's going to arrive on time. But certainly, we're we're always prepared for the worst. In the wake of everything, how's the workload for you guys up there? Still plenty of research to do, I assume. This is a big space station. A lot of, uh, you know, a lot of capability, a lot of uh, science racks and science modules and, and science on board. So, you know, unfortunately, we did lose some stuff on, uh, on SpaceX. And, I, you know, I really feel bad, especially for the kids out there that may have had a, a science experiment on Orbital and then one on SpaceX. Um, you know, NASA had some hardware on both those vehicles that they, uh, you know, rebuilt and tried to fly again. So, uh, you know, I understand how, you know, in those cases it can be somewhat disappointing, but, uh, you know, there are lessons learned there about, you know, keep, keep moving forward and, uh, you know, doing the right thing and working towards uh, progress. But here, 
you know, there's a lot to do. We have a lot of uh, a lot of capability, a lot of science. I mean, more than I just I can do, obviously, and you know, with the help of my Russian colleagues. So we're looking forward to getting those uh, new guys up on board here pretty soon. Well, I mean, that was going to be my next question. Everything looks like it's still on track uh, for their launch later in July. You guys really excited to get back up to the full six-person crew? Yeah, um, excited, you know, for a number of reasons, uh, not just the extra company, although that's good, but, uh, you know, we need their help up here. I'm holding down the fort uh, for now, but uh, it'd be great to have some extra hands. Also, you know, we like those guys, and we want to see them, and, uh, you know, Two, two of those guys have never been to space before, and that's exciting when you see someone uh, in this incredible environment for the first time. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm sure you'll have some fun with the rookie space flyers. Um, so shifting gears a little bit, you're about a quarter of the way now into the one-year mission. How are you feeling? You know, is it any different from you would have been at a halfway point on a normal mission right now? Yeah, so, uh, you know, I remember the 100-day point um, where I when I was here last time pretty well because that was about the same time my uh, my sister-in-law Gabby was was shot in uh, in Tucson and uh, so uh, besides that that happening I mean even before that you know I had a certain level of I don't know if you call it fatigue but just the feeling that I've been here a long time and and at a hundred at the hundred day point when you have a hundred and fifty nine day mission you think about a, I'm going to be coming home pretty soon. It's less than two months. Well, now, since it's so far away, I'm, I don't actually feel the same way. I feel like I have a lot more um, lot more energy, a lot more uh, you know, ability to focus, attention to detail, a lot more enthusiasm about the uh, you know, upcoming 200-plus days. So it was something I, I thought about a lot, and I wondered at the beginning before I flew on this flight wondering if it was really like a uh, you know a last thirds kind of phenomena or was it more you know a hundred days in space is kind of enough but I think it is I think it's when you're you know when you're two-thirds of the way into something is when you kind of start thinking about hey I'm coming home soon versus a uh, hundred days in um, you know comparing this this experience to last time all right. Well, one final question for you. Fourth of July, you know, coming up this weekend. Uh, how does it feel to represent, you know, NASA and the USA in space during the uh, upcoming Independence Day holiday? Well, it's, uh, you know, it's always uh, feels great and, uh, and a privilege to represent our country, uh, NASA. Um, you know, in my case, as a retired member of the uh, military, uh, but on holidays, you know, you even feel more special, um, and then, uh, it feels more of a privilege. You have a, more of a patriotic feeling. Um, and I'd like to wish everyone, a, you know, happy Independence Day. It's a, you know, great holiday, great tradition, and, uh, hopefully the timing will be right, and I'll be able to look down and see little specks of light over the United States on, uh, the evening of the 4th of July. We'll have to see how the, uh, orbital mechanics and such works out.